Uh, there was one girl. I don't know if I should talk about this, Mike, but I'm- We're starting the movie off with Boogie. Just imagine, we, we might have a 18 plus only, you know, tag on the stream just because of this. I'm going to. There was one girl that I dated. She liked a lot of childish things. She liked rubber ducks. That's why I have some of these rubber ducks. No, I think he just had them for himself, honestly. You know, Boogie, it's kind of funny. You have bigger than Desi does. <laughs> Maybe you should be the cam model, not her. And one of my favorite memories with her is us sitting in this tub, her playing with rubber ducks as I, I washed her, and then I, when we got out, I took her to bed. One of the best nights of my life, Mike. It happened right here. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach, I don't know what I'm doing. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. Because you sold it when it dropped. Boogie, you started with 750 grand and you literally, it did, it dipped and he sold it. He panic sold the crypto where he literally bought Bitcoin. You know it was going to go back up. You know it was going to go back up, but he didn't. He panicked. He's like, oh my God, it had a dip. You know, then he freaking sold it low. That's how he lost all his money because he panicked. Well, here's everything. If you want to see, there's $2,758 2, in my bank account right now. And let's see if mortgages come out yet. So tomorrow when they take mortgage out, I'll have about $700 to live off of until the 20th when I get paid again from YouTube. So I'm just going to live off of $700 and I'll probably sell some cards along the way and use that money to make ends meet as well. I have a credit card with them that I owe $600 on. And on top of that, I stole $163,000 on my house. I think my net worth is zero. Once you pull the equity out of the house, get rid of the house debt, sell off all my collectibles, and pay off all my debts, I think that puts me at zero dollars. I'm worthless. Yeah, this is the hard part. Back to reality. But my best feature, this is the one the ladies love. I call it my meat apron. I have two meat curtains. There's a second one. No, Boogie, don't show us that. No, no, no. Uh, are we gonna get banned off YouTube watching this scene? He's about to pull his pants down. All right, we good? Well, he the original hasn't kicked off YouTube yet. I'll have might have to censor this after the fact. Good God, Boogie. Just good God. You you got bypass surgery and you claim that you were only like 300 and some pounds. There's no way unless you're like four foot, like five or something like you're like a, a literal pygmy to be that fat and still be like, you know, less than 400 pounds. You, literally, he looks, he doesn't look like he's lost anything. I have two glorious meat curtains. I don't like showing it to people and people don't like seeing it. So that's why I'm going to die alone. Well, my real name is Steve Williams. Uh, I'm known online as Boogie. 2988 because there's a lot of famous Steve Williamses and I'm not one of them, right? Uh, I started a YouTube channel back in 2006, right at the very beginning. And I got famous for comedy sketches as well as like life vlogs and, and just sharing my personal life with other people. 
What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie to 988 coming at you. My right. ankle on my left leg and head. Um, but that's just the kind of woman I married. So give her some love in the comment section. Thank you so much, Brian Amoeba, for $20. Wow, dude, that's amazing. For your future therapy. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you so much. Give as much money as I used to. Brain Amoeba, not Brian. My bad. Make, and it's not exactly. It's actually really bright. Like, it's like an orange color on my screen, and kind of hard to read but it's brain amoeba enough to make ends meet just this is where i spend six to eight hours a day trying to figure out how to save my career what's up ladies and gentlemen of youtube we're gonna 90 day kind of chill i was getting to the power of the internet and today let's talk a little bit about why you got to do better than i did right I've told the audience, dude, if I had 5,700 bucks coming in a month, I would be loaded out. That's more than I made a freaking Dell. And I was living in a ritzy freaking Lake town, a very nice Lake town, which was very expensive to live in. And I, I was just boogie. How do you not just, all right, let's see his expenses. Let's see how he screwed it I told up. You guys told everybody, okay, let's this watch is the it. center of my world right here. $7,800 a month. Boogie. My my freaking ex, who may be watching this, not bad ex, good ex. She lived in the fr she lived in freaking Los Angeles, and her mortgage was seventeen hundred dollars. She made forty grand a year, and she was perfectly fine living alone. Just, just so, what are you buying? All right, come on, keep loading. I know this thing ain't Kleiner. been taken down because this is a backup of it, just in case they. Tried to take it down, or Boogie tried to bully Mike Clum into taking it down, or something. My dogs. This is a copy that I got that nobody else can get a hold of. So he's losing two thousand fifty-eight dollars a month. Watching television, playing video games on that television, but the other day, <laughs> the audio on this TV started to go out, and whenever it would make like S sounds, it would crackle, and so. I know I'm budgeting, but I immediately went to Amazon and bought a sound bar for a hundred bucks. And then the next day, the TV stopped crackling. And now I have a hundred dollar sound bar that I don't need. Boogie, it's Amazon. Just tell them you want to send it back. Tell them it's not working. It's friggin' Amazon. It's not like Walmart who's going to drag you in the store and ask you 20 questions and make you sign your, like your first born away to return something. It's Amazon. But I know I'm supposed to be budgeting right now, but because that's my TV, because that's my only source of entertainment, because it's the only thing I do, it's one of the only things that bring me peace. Like, I'm like, I have to be able to hear my TV. But that's every addict, right? Like Mitch Hedberg said, I'll just do enough heroin. And then he like OD'd on heroin, right? So I guess every addict tries to manage the addiction, but I don't know, man. We were talking about compulsive spending a minute ago. Yeah. Dude, I spent a lot of stuff on, a lot of money on stuff. You know where a lot of the money went? Got $30, well, $31 from WLS Mojo. Hey, buddy, what's up? Uh, he says, all he cares about is the guilt tripping, uh, is guilt tripping us. What is with these orange freaking boxes they're giving me? Uh, tri guilt tripping us to give him money so he can contribute to spend like an emperor continue all right let me just read that again mojo said all he cares about is guilt tripping us to give him money so he can contribute to spend like an emperor this is pathetic rather give you the money than him thank you so much i appreciate that because the money actually goes towards a real cause which is helping my father live d o'neill five uh british pounds thank you so much sir And like, it felt really compulsive at the time. I am a former ex-worker escort and Boogie2988 was one of my clients. From LA and I get a message on this website you can probably guess which one from this guy who looked a lot like Boogie. I took women on vacations and I took them out to fancy dinners and I took them to like Disneyland and
Yet I'm supposed to believe, by the way, me and Boogie mu mutually blocked each other now. I don't know if you knew that, but <laughs> we, he, he made me so mad earlier that we just mutually blocked each other. Check my community post to see what I finally said to him. My final, you know, get out of here, get out of, just leave me alone post. He tried to tell me that Desi said that she was not a cam girl, that she didn't ever do it on the internet that she just wanted to be a camera operator. This is in my DMs, by the way. And I said, Boogie, she said cam girl. Cam, like, I should have said, I didn't think about it, but I've watched enough Boogie to know that when those two are together, guess who's holding the camera? He is. If she wants to be a camera operator, then why isn't she holding the camera during the Boogie videos that she's in? But he wants to try to gaslight me into saying, oh, she's just a cam operator. She wants she wants to be a camera girl, you know, like for movies and stuff. It's like, no. No. You know, and the screwed up thing was he even like did almost like this hostage video where he sent me a video of him saying, Desi, tell him that you're not a, you know, a, or whatever. I'm not a and he's like, see, Johnny, she's not a and I'm just like, bruh, that's not that's not helping me at all. Just because she says she's not one doesn't mean she she said she's a cam girl in this this movie. Like he's lying. He's lying. He's trying to gaslight me. You know, cam operator my he, he thinks I'm he thinks I'm a probably a stupid redneck that doesn't know my hole in the ground. Um uh, $14 Canadian from Stinger GT2. I hope you and your dad are well, Johnny. Uh, long live the low cow. Thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate that. Bought me dinner. He got me a purse that we were talking about over messages. And oh, it's not in the movie now. I have a video where it still had it in the movie. And he got me a couple gift cards and he spent well over 5000 on just that night. Now, let's take a look. He bought this a purse, $500 in gift cards. 500 pounds of five foot one ethan ralph it's just I had to throw that reference in there um 500 in gift cards 400 in dinner what did you buy did you give this wagyu beef or so i probably did hotel 500 what kind of hotel costs 500 boogie that's like a week in a hotel why are you whining dining and just a $2,500 for the bruh like yeah, she looks like she looks like an old librarian. He has a type. This Desi looks like an old librarian. So, I mean, it could be worse. He could have spent it in WWE Legends. <laughs> you know the rules. The rules are we're going to go out and eat. We're going to have dinner. Maybe we're going to And you're going to enjoy a nice lifestyle that you don't normally get to enjoy. Why are you trying to, why is he doing, did he watch Pretty Woman as when he was a kid and think, I'm going to turn a hoe into a housewife? That, like, that's not how it works. You know what I mean? It's like, he's really trying to do the hoe into a housewife thing. And Pretty Woman ruined people because of that. And just, <laughs> that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to do a hoe into a housewife. But you remember, remember the ludicrous lyrics? Remember what he said? Can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Hoes don't act right. So he was really funny. You can definitely tell he was nervous. Um, he did eat a lot of food. I'm pretty sure he got two entrees, which was very unique. It's not a rest. He ain't got no room to judge anybody, lady. I mean, I know where the boogie is just a complete degenerate scum for spending that much on a, on a but at the same time she ain't no better and i know people get mad at me about those arguments about workers being disgusting but i mean really <laughs> i mean they just are you know that here's the thing okay you think workers aren't disgusting they have some boogie for money most women would not have some boogie for money or without money Think about it. You when you put your dick in this worker, she probably has had more than one boogie inside of her. Do you really want a woman that has had multiple boogies in her mouth and in her puss? No, you don't. They're gross. Get out of here with that. Relation. I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. I don't boogie. I like them ugly as sin. I like them the uglier the better. I don't. I don't. I like my women to be four hundred pounds, man. 
I don't like no beautiful woman. What's wrong with you, man? You know, I like them big and burly and. <laughs> no, it's actually a joke. No, I like hot chicks too. But they were like Arkansas eights. <laughs> Not Arkansas that eights. That's like a Virginia one. <laughs> LA tens with sugaring. I got to some LA tens, and I think that's cool. We got back to the hotel, and I do regret to say that I slept with Boogie 2988. Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there was rolls upon rolls upon rolls, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. Wait, wait, wait. I was, I was halfway paying attention right there. Did she say it took a long time to find his dick? <laughs> Not LA tens with sugaring. I got to some LA tens and I think that's cool. We got back to the hotel and I do regret to say that I slept with Boogie 2988. Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there was rolls upon rolls upon rolls and- Rolls, not rules. I thought she was saying rolls upon rolls upon rolls. It took me a lot of time to find a stick. It took her a long time to find his dick. That is. There's something poetic about that. I am not married with two kids and sleeping. Look, if you're doing like the deep voice thing, trying to be like deep throat off of one of those old noir things after one of those old, you know, uh, I'm glad you came. You know, it's like Kermit or whatever. Like, why are you showing all these different angles of what you look like? You know, if someone saw the side of my head, like the angle right now, I'm pretty sure they could recognize me from that angle. Well, Boogie is one of the reasons I quit work. <laughs> Boogie's, Boogie turned her straight, all right. He turned her away from screwing people because she's like, oh, God, I, I can I can never do another Boogie. Oh, Jesus, that is terrible. That is that is horrifying. What is going on with this piece? Give me a second. Okay, keep going. Is that sexist to me? Sure. Is that womanizing me? Sure. I don't really care. Um, I'm a 48 year old man. I never got to a model. This let me a couple of models. Is that wrong? Yeah, a little bit. Here we have some of the women in this area that are local and ready to go out. They'll go to dinner with you. They'll go to a show with you. Maybe. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just, I'm, I'm distracted. Look, let me see. Let's see these women that Here he can pick from. Some of the women in this area that are local and ready. These are the women. Oh, hold out, on. Bill. This one right here is uh, any, these two right here, are ones that you would pay for boogie. I'm sorry, but I, they'd have to pay me to take them out. Especially this one. This one in the middle. I ain't trying to be shamey. I ain't, I ain't trying to be sexist. Well, <laughs> People say I'm sexist all the time. You're probably right on not not necessarily sexist, but just uh, just more harsh towards women than I probably should be. Actually, no, there some women are just terrible and deserve it. But yeah, that one in the middle, uh, that's that's people expecting to pay for that. Well, how much am I supposed to pay for that middle one? Jesus Christ! I'll go to dinner with you. They'll go to a show with you. Maybe they'll come back to your place but they are expecting something in exchange uh but then it's window shopping right like any other meat market like tinder you kind of scroll down the, the list of photos until you find someone that looks interesting to you and that's how i met desi everybody i've met her on one of these sites since we can find you know friggin triggly puff on this site <laughs> my god just really cute oh yeah yeah she's definitely a little thicker than i necessarily would always go for but there's no boogie do you talk about thick look at you man you you thicker than a bowl of oatmeal you you thicker than a case of oatmeal whole box seriously you talking about her being fat nothing wrong with that so I deserve to go to Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl, right? Like I deserve that and I want that and I've never had it. Man, if I had that money back, that would be half of my mortgage right now. 
That thousand dollars is my entire health insurance payment. I don't know what the prostitutes did with it, and I hope they spent it in, in good health. Uh, but I sure could use that right now. <laughs> Leo, uh, oh my God, we got 142 people watching. That's that's psychotic. Oh, this is me. This is part of me. And uh, I made some money off of YouTube last month, but I did not make enough without a sponsor or something like that. I just, I'm not making enough, so we're gonna go to the game shop. But this is gonna keep me from going out on the uh, on the streets, right? Like this is gonna keep me in a house. So I think I think it's bittersweet. I think he would find it bittersweet. He would have wished I'd I had spent my money smarter. I'm selling magic cards on whatnot. I'm selling collectibles on eBay. I'm selling arcade machines locally. I'll sell it all. And I'm gonna sell enough to help with mortgage. But I'm also gonna sell enough to be able to play magic tonight. Cause I don't want people wondering why I'm not there. I don't want people like knowing I'm broke, like that's embarrassing. I can't afford $30 to play Magic. So I'm spending 30 bucks to play Magic tonight. Okay, so this month I need from you about $1,000 to make mortgage. So I need you to pick out like $1,000 for the stuff. Like there's a couple of cradles in there. Mm -hmm. There's a city of traders in there. Well, I can do 200 a piece on those. What? Dude, I thought we were looking more like 400, 450 on each of these. 175 is what it's down to. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Those Good took lord, that time. took a beat. These are reserved list cards, Glenn. Yeah. They're not going anywhere but up. Okay. Well, you say that, but the dual lands went down. I mean, yeah, all right. As long as I'm getting mortgage money, as long as I'm getting some cards out tonight, okay. You, you do, you, you gave me these back, mm -hmm. you know, to set on until I come back in here because I'm not going to sell them anybody else for you. Okay. Two, no, make it three chicken quesadillas. What's paying for this? You're paying me back on <laughs> That don't hurt. Yeah, we all look the same in a game shop. It's because we're outcasts. We're in a kind of small town. We're autistic -ish. We're awkward around women. We're awkward around people. We don't know what we're doing. And then I come back here and I'm looking at all that I need to sell. And I'm surrounded by all that I bought for YouTube videos and stuff. And it's hard to not think about what I've got by him. But that's why I go to the arcade. That's why I go to play magic. That's why I have my friends over. Because for just a few hours, I'm not that up from YouTube. I'm just Steve Williams. I'm just me. Oh, this is this is my Saturday night crew. We get together every Saturday. We eat pizza. We play magic. We play board games. We do Smash Brothers. There's a bunch of boogies in one room. That's uh, that's definitely a sight to behold. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that might be a female at the end, but you know, it was. <laughs> Magic the Gathering, this is my crack, this is my cocaine. I met him at the magic shop. I met him with at Taco magic Bell, shop. apparently. Now, him, I met at the magic shop. This guy, I met at the magic shop. Yep. This guy, I met uh, at the magic shop. This guy, I met because he was a roommate with a friend I met at the magic shop. Okay, so I have a million dollar question for you guys. How did he find someone fatter than him? I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. But it looks like he went to like a fat guy convention and just got everybody to come home with him for this movie. Imagine the smell exactly, Steve Guy, you're right. Imagine the smell. I'm so sorry, dude. Every Saturday. He might be the nicest dude on earth. Just, it just, it just caught me off guard there. We get together. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday I order what? Pizza, chicken fingers, tacos. Those are the things I normally get us, right? Thank like, you for two dollars. It's Bread Ben Discord Mod Meetup. <laughs> Sounds about right. I normally spend like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars every Saturday. Can you hear me? Fetus. And like I showed them my bank books today, and I'm not like I've never wanted to burden you guys with this, but like I'm at a point where saving three hundred dollars a month would be useful. I mean, we've, we've been telling month. you for years that we don't care about the food that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't like, don't get me wrong. I like 
having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Right. But we've, I mean, we definitely said it throughout the years. Like, you don't have I, to feed us, but I know you, you, you I do know. it anyway. So when are we going to start bringing girlfriends around? Also, when are we going to start bringing girlfriends around that aren't? When are we going to start bringing girlfriends around to a room of people that have probably never had a girlfriend? Read the room, Boogie. Because <laughs> that's all I brought around. Look, that guy is just disgusted with Boogie. Years. I mean, like, we haven't had, like, legitimate girlfriends over in a long time. You haven't dated in, in a while. You haven't dated in a while. I mean, yeah, a while. I'll, that's fair enough, yeah. I mean, you've, you've like, had some... I think, you like I think he's a good guy, yeah. I think that Boogie's definitely a, a good guy. Uh, he loves his friends and his family, and he cares about people a lot, and he cares about what people think about him a lot. He's a fun person to be around and to laugh and make jokes with. Sometimes we open up and we have, like, really personal conversations, and I enjoy getting to know him in that way as well. Willing to do things for us, he's offered to you know, take care of us or offered us a room if he needs it. Um, he's still gonna make some of the same jokes. You know, we all have a sort of dry sense of humor. Sincere kindness, uh, it's, it doesn't always show up, but uh, he, he does have a lot of, a lot of compassion. Dude, that looks like Pete's from like the Fruity Beauty videos. You know, the dude that used to date Chantal like years ago and he still sticks around for some reason. That, that's what this dude looks like. People that I think he's just a guy. <laughs> with good and bad. But I don't think he's as bad as a lot of corners of the internet think he is. I think as long as he stops tweeting the N-word, he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was serious about that. The N-word is just a word. Say it, Boogie. I can dare you to say it. I forgot that these things are uncensored. So I can say all I want in these, in these videos, in the live versions. Say it, but can say it. Nah, nah. I'll, I'll start the first two letters. Nah. Come on, Boogie. What's the rest of it? If you guys left and these cameras weren't rolling, say it, Boogie. I want, I want a clip of you saying it. And I was sitting here alone in the dark, and I said the N word. There's no magic power to it. So say it. Just, he just, say it, dude. <laughs> Freaking Vosh. Okay, side sidebar, really quick. Vosh literally had this thing where he started saying the N word with the hard R, like during streams. And he's like, that word doesn't impress me. Blah, 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 blah. And he was trying to justify saying it because he said the same reason that, all right, if y'all remember Clerks 2, remember the guy, um, I'm not going to say the, the phrase on here, but, you know, something to do with porches. You know, he said that word. And he's like, he started saying the porch word over and over, saying he was taking it back. Vosh did the same thing with the hard R N word on his stream, saying that if he said it more, that it would take away the power from white nationalists by him saying the N word with the hard R on his stream as often as possible. And he still somehow did not get banned for that. But if I said that word once, my entire internet presence would be nuked in the instant I said it. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it on camera where it could hurt somebody. I like offensive humor. I like it's like, yeah, when the lights are off and me and Desi are just laying there in bed, sometimes I just yell the N word. <laughs> just that's what he's just that's what he's trying to imply dark jokes i say i think the darker something is cancer murder the n-word child abuse the darker it is the more important it is to make jokes about if you don't like this son goku then you can go watch the original it's on youtube that's the entire point is for me to stop and talk about Yeah. I feel, I'm sorry you had to go through that, bro. Yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. And, uh, yep, yeah, so her. And now she's dead. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color, or is it not? I don't know. Someone says you can't put your finger in. You know, the thing is, like, I'm legitimately not racist, and I've never had to say anything like that. Like, I've never felt the need to 
to do that. You know, like it's like Vosh does it and Boogie does it. And a lot of these far like bread tube types do it where like, they'll basically like try to, you know, show that they're not racist and like, like explain it and like demonstrate how not racist they are. And it's like, you know, if you're not racist, then you don't need to tell other people. You just don't say racist. You know, he just don't say race and no one questions it. No one's like walking around asking for your anti-racist card, you know, into a clitoris. Somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy. You play that just right. You can wrap it all around your fingers. You just got to, you got to shave real thin. Woo. That's disturbing. That's the most. No, I plan to shoot you, bud. You pointing a gun at me? Yes. Dude, that was the weakest sounding gunshot ever. Seriously. It sounded, it sounded weaker than Mega Man's freaking, like, pea shooter. Is this what we have to do? Where it really went south is when one guy spent like a month of his time gathering every link, every video clip, every... Okay, sure. Uh, if uh, documentary is a little low, I'll, I'll turn it up a bit. I'll give you a couple of DB. Um... There you go. That should be a little bit louder. All right, l l let's see how this is. D just let me know if it's too quiet when uh, you start hearing this in about 30 seconds. Everything I'd ever said or done since 1998, and he compiled it into this one huge mega thread. It's like 10, 15 pages long. And every time my name would get mentioned on Reddit moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Well, these people on Reddit began to bombard my sponsors to make. All right, by the way, if you want to have a deep dive, actually, we can actually turn it up because I stopped the video to talk anyway. Um, I'll turn it up just so the audio is a little bit more level. Um, so I'll give you about two or three seconds just to adjust your volume on like your phone or your TV or your. Uh, PC to make sure it doesn't blow your ears out really quick. Uh, three, two, one. All right. Make me look as bad as possible. Every time I got a new sponsor, they would bombard me. And uh, eventually they dropped me. He's talking about me where? What, here? And moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Well, these people on Reddit began to bombard my sponsors to make me look as bad as possible. Every time I got a new sponsor, they would bombard me. And uh, eventually they dropped me. I didn't think about the whole volume thing, investigating. I, I, I was thinking more like if I said something during it, but now I've gotten kind of into my rhythm of if I have something to say, I'll stop the video kind of thing, like I do in the regular video. So there's kind of no reason to have the volume lower than my voice if I'm just going to stop it, you know, and have it muted when I say something. So my bad for earlier. Are you ready? Are you ready to step back into 1988? You ready to go back to my childhood? Because that's what's behind the star. You know what? Do you want to know what this represents to me? This is everything that was good about my childhood. And when I walk back in here, it's like going back in time, except things aren't complete. So this is the classic. I mean, I even have a Pac Man tattoo. This is the game I most identify with because it's about a little round guy running through a maze trying to figure it out. Eating balls, a little round guy running around a maze, eating balls, and then, you know, getting really excited and like, you know, chasing people after eating really big balls. That That's what you identify with, Boogie. Eat waka, 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 waka. Eating everything in sight and getting chased by ghosts of his past. I'm basically Pac-Man. I know it's simple fun. And, uh, I mean, look at the guy. He looks like me. Uh, I, I might have sprained. He sprained his ankle walking to the bathroom. How in the did that happen? Sprained it or broken it or something. I was walking to the bathroom in there. Did you fall down or and what? And there was a loud snap sound. And things kind of shifted in one direction. Oof. And now my foot is swelling into my shoe. 
Oh my god, dude! I've actually I had I had a fall like earlier this year, and it swelled up to probably about two or three times the regular size. And yeah, get it to the ER, man. Make sure you didn't break that thing somehow. And it hurts really badly. Yeah, go to the ER real quick. Let, let him the get an X-ray. Old and fat. You never know. You don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. You don't know if today is that stroke or heart attack you've been waiting on or if it's going to be a healthy day and you feel real good for a change you never know it's going to be the day oh my god do i think i'll make 50 yeah probably that's only two years away do i think i'll make 60 which is 12 years away probably not boogie let me explain something to you B.B. King was as fat, if not fatter, than you ever were, and he lived until he was in his 80s. He had diabetes, somehow didn't ever lose a foot, was still able to sing like a freaking angel, just like the, the, the greatest blues singer of all time. Well, I, Ray Charles probably up there, too. I, I, well, Ray Charles more soul than blues. The greatest blues musician ever had the the voice of God when he was just really gone, you know, just like, I can't do it. Cause I, I'm not, you know, an eight year old black dude, you know, playing a giant Gibson guitar, but God, BB King was amazing. That, that dude was just, his voice was just, just would blow your head off with how big and strong it was like, God, but he lived until he was 80, 82, I think. Here's everything that's wrong with Boogie. Low test. Boogie going to be sitting there 90 some years old. I will die any day today. And then he's a hundred die any day today. And then 120 and he just keeps going and going and going. Never dies. Astro testicular hypogonadism. Okay. So he has low testosterone. Okay. You can just take some medicine for that. You know, maybe injections or something. Sleep apnea. Hypogonadism. What the hell does that mean? Okay, let, let's uh, let's look this up. Testicular hypogonadism. There are two. It basically means he's not getting enough testosterone from his nuts. Swelling due to blockages of lymphatic flow. Seboric eczema, chronic eczema, boogie eczema is a rash. It is not deadly at all. I have eczema on my freaking forearms, and most of the time I don't notice it. Chronic back pain, lose weight. I have back pain too. Go see a chiropractor. For fuck's sake, protein in urine. What does that mean? Like back pain, protein. None of these things are deadly. None of them. Where's high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, heart disease, diabetes, anything, cancer, anything that would actually kill you. And urine. That's from kidney damage, folks. That is everything keeping me alive. We have Losartan, Tramadol, Buprofen, Sertraline. Uh, did I deal with back pain? I deal with nightmares? I'm always tired. I don't know the last time I did sleep. Otherwise, if I don't wear this machine, it's, it's a list of stuff that's not going to kill you, but Boogie wants you to think it will. Night, when I'm supposed to be sleeping, I'm actually drowning in my own fat. Uh, high blood pressure, history of gastric bypass, intestinal malabsorption, vitamin D sufficiency, because like most gamers, I hate the sun, morbid obesity, major depressive disorder, major anxiety disorder. History of diabetes mellitus, blood pooling in veins, varicose veins of the legs with complications, degeneration of lumbar or lumbosacral intervertebral disc. None of these things are deadly. None of these are terminal. None of these are going to kill you. None of them. Seriously, none of these. That means my back don't work so good. History of basal cell carcinoma, that's cancer. Okay. And of course I can Give me a second, you know how I am, I have to look everything up. Basal cell carcinoma, let's see what that actually means. Basal cell carcinoma. What is that? It says, a type of skin cancer 
seriously boogie you can get it lopped off it's not even really freaking face skin cancer it's like that's like the least oh my god my grandmother had it four times on top of two other types of cancer she had cancer like many times and survived all of it she, she was like a freaking german tank though lived till she was 84 doctors still don't know what killed her she just just i don't know what happened she eventually got dementia and one day she just didn't go get up history of basal cell carcinoma that's cancer and of course i can't breathe so good so asthma and allergies a bunch of non-deadly just annoyances that you have to deal with except for the diabetes part which just i got it you just gotta stop eating taco bell boogie for fuck's sake as well so he acts like he's like a, a terminal cancer patient has been through chemo like 10 times and is, has like stage four liver or pancreatic cancer. He has nothing wrong with him except for just being fat, lazy. By the way, diabetes, mellitus or whatever, which is I think type two, he could reverse it. If he lost weight, he could get it under control. And he could even get it to go in remission where he wouldn't be diabetic anymore. My fat needs to do that, but he could. You know, he listed a bunch of nothing. It was all nothing. It's a waiting game now. And it's just exactly little for foot media one. What happened to his blood cancer? That just apparently just vanished about making the best of it. You just enjoy what you got when you got it. Sometimes that's a chicken case of the end. I wanted to make like a documentary that was generally entertaining. You realize, wait a second, everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest I've ever heard. That would be half of my wonder right now. And it's just about making the best of it. This is the first documentary we're, I'm doing. I can't put out a documentary that's this guy the whole time because I don't want my brand new channel uh, to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people that exist. It's just like, what the happened to this guy? What the happened to Boogie? He's losing what makes we people almost really like him. It, it okay, could... we officially are about twelve. Well, we might actually be breaking the record of people watching this show at once. I'm seriously in awe at the fact that we have 188 people watching right now. I was, I was legitimately expecting maybe 10, 15 people tops because that's the average stream. If you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe bell icon. That way you are actually notified when I'm streaming and join the discord. Cause I always announce it in there. Discord link is at the top where it says follow me with the link tree. All right, let's keep going. Maybe we'll hit 200 tonight. It'll probably, that's just, I can't believe it. Thank you everyone. Seriously. Thank you. Be as simple as just that positive attitude. Why not use your only life? to make the lives around you better. You, it's none of your business. It's my body, it's my choice. And over time. Look, he used to actually, did he gain weight? Hold on. Better. You, it's none of your business. All right, so look, he actually did look halfway decent right there. But like, then he got fat again. So somehow he got his stomach to the size of a friggin' baseball and somehow got fatter, like refat, like middle fat from what he used to be and what he is now. Like, how did you pull that off with the stomach the size of a baseball? Business is my body, it's my choice. And over time, in the content, we see this shift where he starts to become more interested in money. I just like making content. I just like talking to a camera. I just like 
doing cool stuff. I just want ad revenue. I just want YouTube to pay me a fair amount. It's all I've ever wanted, right? And Same thing here. If YouTube would pay me a fair amount, it would be nice, but I'm only making about 300 bucks a month right now. <laughs> I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not raking in the money. You know, I might make $400 a month off of doing this, but I enjoy it. I really do. I love, you know, enjoying, you know, I really enjoy making these videos. I think it's fun just to watch Boogie just be just an idiot and just be like, Boogie, what the is wrong with you? It's almost like a, a twitch. Every time I see a Boogie video pop, I'm like, all right, what did he do this time? And his concerns about money. If I could teach you anything, it's to hold on to the money you get. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. And more interested in complaining. I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more grateful to people. Want to come? Thank you. I'm a walking embarrassment, dude. We do. Look at me. I'm disgusting. Better. I'm a piece. Of function the way you function. It's not possible. Um, that's why if you're griping to your viewers, if you're complaining to your subscribers, I mean, that just leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. I think my window's closing. And if it's not closing already, it's it's already closed. Right, so if there was money to be made in making people feel depressed, I think Boogie would be in the right business. Like that's just my life philosophy at this point. Just face down in the mud. That's that's pretty much how we live our lives. That, that's right around the corner. Like I have to sell this place. I have to, I have to tap into the equities to survive. Like that's the last of my money. You don't have insurance. What do you owe? And $650 is going to make you sell the house boogie. Boogie. This, this, this film is horrible. It's not Mike Clum's fault. Once again, I'm not here to on Mike Clum. I think so far he's made a watchable movie. It, like I said before, he's a good director with a shitty script. That's what he's gotten. Cause Boogie basically lied to me about everything at this point. And it's just, I am, I know that we had that moment of concern a while back where Boogie first DM'd me and people were like, Johnny, don't listen to it. He's going to manipulate you, blah, blah, blah. And a bunch of people were like freaking out and oh my god that you know your channel's gonna go to you're gonna start losing subscribers and it never happened because i have footage i have the dms on my phone still all of them backed up to an encrypted cloud where if he tries to take me out of context i can show you and what i'll tell you what happened in the conversation he said johnny you know, I like your videos, but you get a few things wrong. I asked him, what do I get wrong? And they basically didn't have an answer for what I got wrong. And then he basically gave me a guilt trip about Johnny. I'm literally dying. I'm so sick and I can't do your weight loss competition idea. Doing the YouTube's biggest loser though would make me so much money that I would just be a star again. I can't do it because I'm sick. I'm dying. I don't know when I'm going to basically what you're seeing in this movie. So just after that i just stopped listening and then he came to me today so we there was never any manipulation you know, it was literally he guilt tripped me i said all right well he's not going to take my idea of getting stop talking to him then he came back today or yesterday and was like johnny you're lying about desi she's not a camera and blah, blah 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 i said boogie and he's like oh she doesn't have a fansly i said boogie I didn't say anything about a fansly or her only fans or her, even a website she would work on. All I said was she said she's a cam girl. It's just like, what the, and he admitted that he never seen any of my videos. He's getting information from other people that watch my and not watching my videos and trying to come at me and shit me and throw tantrums at me and my DMS about videos. He didn't watch. So I told him Boogie, that's what I told him in the, in the, you know, if you look at my community post, I basically said, Boogie, if you, if you don't watch my show, unless someone in my community is harassing you directly in a real life fashion, coming to your house, like Frank Castle, get the cat of my DMs is basically what I, the, I said a very much nicer version of that, but basically I told him to get lost and I blocked him. And then he blocked me and that was it.
gives me, he was wasting my time at that point. So no, I wasn't manipulated at any point. No, I wasn't going to sell it to Boogie for fuck's sake. I almost get more viewers than he does. <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? I have 2,700 subs. I get almost more views than Boogie does. I get like a third of what he does on a video and I put in less effort than he does. How the, f if I was going to sell out, I would sell out to Mr. Beast. Somebody with an actual pull. Jesus. So much of that money is going to doctor's appointments and tests and all of that is just to stay alive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, seriously, you people, you've broken the record. Tonight is the record for live attendance. I've never had over 200 people. I'm so used to having five to 10 people watching. Seriously. It's been many, many years of only five to 10 people watching. We're broke 200 tonight. This is a Johnny Fox record. You know, ever since 2014, we've never gotten this high ever. So thank you. There are plenty of different content creators to have various mental illnesses all over social media. And some just say, it is what it is, and this is what I'm going to do. Boogie tends to be really obsessed with this idea that it's favorable to have people feel sorry for you, and that kind of victim uh, mentality where you can get further in life. If no, hey, Ricardo, just really quick, Ricardo in the chat said he didn't even make it two and a half minutes before he started complaining about money. He legitimately, the documentary, if you go back and watch it from the very beginning, the very opening monologue is him about money. He didn't even have to wait two and a half minutes. He's starting about money at the very beginning of the movie. Like he's been about money the entire time. There was no, it took only, he started with about money. Uh, people have compassion on you, regardless of the reason they're doing it. I look awful. If I look like I've been through over the last couple of days, it's because I have been. Most notably, I've ruined my body. Like Jerry, I ruined my own career. Maybe it was the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's because I... It's been a, a method of... I, I think covert narcissism is the right phrase. Like, oh, look at how... Overt? You think that... You think it's covert, Boogie? You think that you're, that you're slick, that we don't see the narcissism? Covert nar... Get the fuck out of here pathetic i am you should feel sorry for me you would never be mean to me because i'm so pathetic right oh i'm so fat i'm so weird i'm so goofy i'm such an old man I'm so i just want to don't say it you're gonna get in trouble boogie's gonna think it's a terroristic threat if i say i need to smack him in minecraft but desi needs to just haul off and slap him in the face as hard as she can when he starts all this woe is me i'm dying and crying and whining and all that stuff just smack him desi if you're watching smack him just a good slap in the face is just like the is you know the greatest equalizer like it will it will give you more clarity than post nut clarity will a smack in the face will get anybody to snap out of it seriously Give him an old Sean Connery. <laughs> I grew up in Give him a good old Sean Connery, just a good old slap, just one right across the face, and he'll he'll straighten up. Abuse of family and abuse of home. In Minecraft, come on, Boogie, Jesus Christ! The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is. is so vulnerable narcissism has a number of characteristics. Uh, a person can be considered a vulnerable narcissist without having them all. So with vulnerable narcissism or covert narcissism, we see pessimism. I feel defeated and confused and lost all the time, every day. Hypersensitivity to criticism. I can't handle this kind of hate. I can't handle these types of attacks. I can't do it. Reactive anger, so they're not really thinking things through. Is this what I have to do? <laughs> who goes by Boogie2988 was booked into the jail this morning. Need for admiration. Can I get a round of applause? The self-centeredness. I'm the perfect victim. I have been victimized my entire life. The sense of entitlement. You guys want to help me pay for my Tesla? Please go ahead and dig deep. Hold on a second. Hold the fuck on. All right, we got to go to my Discord real quick. Hold on a second. Let me make sure that I'm not... Just give me a second. I don't... Give me a second.
All right, so I'm in my Discord now, which you should do, totally join is discord.johnnyfox.net. Um, if you go in here, there was something earlier that was brought to my attention. Let me move this over so we can actually see it. Um, Boogie in the chat of this uh, premiere said that he didn't have a Tesla. And now he's talking, is this it right here? Right here, Brendan, I never had a Tesla, question mark. I don't know if he meant that he, like, can we, is there a way to pan this down a little bit? How do we do, maybe this one. Will this work better? Actually, that didn't do no better. Anyway, it's in the Discord. It's right there at the very bottom where it's cut off. It says, this is sad. And then Boogie says something about not having a Tesla. And then, like, he's lied so many times about the Tesla thing. Did he have one? Did he not have one? And then it was something he had like a $1,200 car payment. Like, I mean, I don't know if he had one or not. But he keeps like changing his mind on if he had a Tesla or not. I sure would like a free test. Leaving oneself to be special. See, he basically, all right, hold on. Can I get a round of applause? Never mind. He actually said, I uh, really wish I had a free Tesla as in the fans would pay it off. Yeah, that made sense. Okay. I'm victimized my entire life. The self-centeredness. I'm the perfect victim. I have been victimized my entire life. The sense of entitlement. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free Tesla. Leaving oneself to be special. How many kids went on to get 4.5 million YouTube subscribers. One, nine. Steven uh, Williams! You're just watching the same things over and over again. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie, Boogie Tiny, Tiny Eight Comic Jobs is gonna power hour. As much as Boogie loves to do like these long road trips and stuff, a Tesla would be a terrible idea because you can't charge the damn things up in most of the country. I mean, seriously, I don't know of any charging stations back home in Virginia, period. <laughs> I mean, let alone, what is he going to do? Have to like fight, like, then you have to wait forever for it to charge. Like, Teslas are only good if you live in like a city where you never leave the city. You know what I mean? Like, if you're somebody that just drives to work and back and work is like 20, 30 minutes away and you never go on road trips, you never go on spontaneous travel. Sure, Tesla's fine. At any other time, if you want to go anywhere beyond the city, you're, you're just screwed. His fall from grace is it, it, so catastrophic. Not happy about it. People are sick of the shtick. And what would you recommend to him now uh, to get his viewers back? Weight loss competition. I brought it up a hundred times now. He just doesn't listen. Okay, so people in chat, I don't know how many there are, but people in chat, would you watch Boogie again if him, Wings, and Airsoft Fatty did a weight loss competition? Big, uh, YouTube's biggest loser, whoever wins the competition in six months, 12 months, whatever, you know, what, whatever you call it, like punt the gun or something like that. I think that's what they're going to do with Josh Moon. You know, Josh Moon was telling Ralph that he would have a weight loss competition with him called Punt the Gunt. And y'all would y'all would probably watch that, I'm sure. If it was like legitimate, like if it was like the world's biggest loser, YouTube edition. Boogie loses weight, Airsoft Fatty loses weight, Wings loses weight, whatever. We could even well, Nikado already lost weight. Whoever, you know, and I said you could even get like the fans involved and like have like a fan version. So like you would have the main show, which would be boogie versus, you know, wings versus airsoft versus whoever. And they would all compete for like 10,000, 50,000, whatever, have Mr. Beast get involved. Cause Keem stars there. I'm sure you could talk to Mr. Beast, you know, get Mr. Beast involved. Whoever wins gets, you know, whatever huge amount of money. And then the fans will do it. And you get a bunch of sponsors and the fans will do it. And like whoever wins the world's biggest loser, you know, on YouTube, the fans, like people can make their own lost channels. Whoever wins will get like 10 grand, you know, on YouTube. So giant world competition to lose weight, the biggest, you know, the world's biggest loser. And it was not that hard to set that up, you know. It really wouldn't be. And there's, you know, people would pay to see that. 
and I pitched this to Boogie more than once, and he always brought me the same. Johnny, I'm sick. Johnny, I'm dying. Johnny, I can't do it. It's like. I don't think he's getting his viewers back. I don't think that's a possibility. I think the only thing to do now is. All I'd want is a consultant's fee. That's all I'd want just for coming up with the idea. Just get, just give me a flat rate fee of whatever we we'd have to work it out if they wanted to do it, go a different angle. I'd write up the whole format. Y'all just pay whoever, you know, is going to manage the came star, whatever they can pay me, whatever. But I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but how do you change yourself? Like viewers are smart. Like they want to see you. They want to see what you're interested in. I don't know. You got to get a job. Maybe in this case, GameStop. Mike Klum, 50 bucks. Thank you, sir. Your movie has been quite good so far. He just says, Johnny Fox. How you doing, Mike? I, I really appreciate you putting this movie up. As I've said, no hate towards Mike. Mike has made a great film. He is a great director with a script is what he got. But I do appreciate his effort for sure. It has come out as good as you could with the script about Boogie being self-loathing. Self-loathing. Boogie agreed to attempt to get a real job. Oh, good God. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on, I, I got. For some reason, like, if you look at him right there, doesn't he look like Dennis Nedry from Jurassic Park? He got the glasses. He's fat. He's drinking a coke. <laughs> he just, I'm just waiting for the Dilophosaurus to jump out and spit in his face. Oh my god. I agree, Mike. If you want to make a good movie, a Wings movie wouldn't be bad, or a DSP movie wouldn't be bad if you want to stay in the low cow um, sort of thing. I think DSP or um, Wings of Redemption would be great, you know, movies to make. Nice to meet you. My name is Don. Don, I'm Boogie or Steve. Okay. King Cobra would not be a bad one either, but he doesn't have that much of an audience. So you wouldn't get, you might though, you might get decent off of King Cobra, but. Wings and uh, DSP would definitely be huge, you know, draws. Probably bigger than Boogie, actually. I'm pretty sure DSP would be. Cyrex is too is too toxic for 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 Mike. There's no way. Cyrex right. is way too bad. You prefer to be called honestly, by. probably Steve. Steve. Let's go with Steve. Okay, Steve. No problem. Whatever you prefer. And so you are here today because you are seeking employment yeah you're seeking out new work opportunities absolutely tell me a little bit about your background and where you think you want to go with the experience that you already have um i did work at a small gaming store back in 2006 2007 i am disabled uh recognized by the state of arkansas but also the united states government there's that now the, the downside of that is i am extremely depressed so there's boogie well, he, he's just trying to flunk the job interview. That's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to flunk it. He's trying to get out of having to do a job interview. Some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I am also a pedophile. Should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this woman who deals with crackheads who are, have like, you know, one like hair on their head probably and just like no teeth and look like Cyrex. She deals with that and, and Boogie thinks this is gonna, you know, amaze her. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. Okay. So I think there are some avenues you could explore. I definitely don't think it's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and you're using weight and disability. I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're going to have when you approach everything, then you can't and you right. won't.
Exactly. You need to stop being a little boogie. You know, you need to stop being a little better. Everything get yourself up and start doing, just start moving. I'm so sick of these people like boogie to just sit there and whine and complain. And, oh, woe is me. My life sucks. Oh my God. I can't do nothing about it. I'm just too fat and stupid. Your honor. Get the boogie. You just told me a list of conditions that are number one, reversible and number two, not deadly even if you don't do anything about it you're not gonna die from having back pain everyone has back pain fat small she probably has back pain you know like like chiropractors don't only work on fat people i did work in the industry for the better part of seven years so i mean <laughs> she's just amazed by that line she's thinking really <laughs> just i mean there are people out there that probably would be under watching Boogie for me. We haven't gotten to that scene yet where Boogie's going to be with Desi in the tub. Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference? It depended on the job, I would think. Like, <laughs> If you're going to go work at one of those stores and go mop up Spooge off the adult arcade, sure, then it would be a great, that would be a great one, Boogie strip club maybe but probably not in a more professional setting i would say yes i would say that uh what would you think his get the pine saw boogie start mopping up that spooge chances are here of getting employment in the next three months i'm not sure when it comes to the felony we would have to seek cor corporate approval for that sort of charge in order to proceed forward with a candidate. And they would ultimately be the ones to make the decision as to whether or not we would feel comfortable presenting someone like that to our clients. Violent felonies, violent crimes or sexual crimes. Um, hey, Mike, uh, listen, dude. Uh, I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I I'm not gonna walk into some job when I have 4 million subscribers on YouTube, I'm one of the original YouTubers. There, he's a... Mike, I love you because you actually left in Boogie telling the truth. It's not that he can't work, it's that he feels entitled where he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to do anything. He, he thinks he deserves something for having 4 million subs. I have 2,700 right now. I might have 2,800 by the end of this, but I have 2,700 last time I checked. When I was doing to catch a predator content, I could have lived off of that. It was that popular. It's all on Patreon now, by the way. If you want to watch my to catch predator series, 80 plus episodes that YouTube made me take down 80 plus episodes of my to catch a predator riff track series, Patreon linked below, but boogie, you just, you just don't make videos. People get that's the problem. You need to make people, you need to make stuff that people want to watch. And there's something that boogie has never done. As far as I can tell in the 40 plus videos I've watched of his for this show, he's never said, Hey audience, Hey chat right here. The people that are chatting. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hopefully you're having a good day. Hey, what would you want me to do? What, what would you want me to watch? Or what would you want me to do on my channel that would make you watch more? What is it that you like about my channel? Uh, I'm being rhetorical, but I maybe mean, you can say it in the chat if you want, but that's what boogie needs to do. If you want the audience to give you money and you want the audience to watch you need to give them content that they want to see it doesn't matter if you have four million subs it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how many subs you got if you're putting out that nobody wants to watch you know what i mean if nobody was watching my boogie stuff, I would stop making boogie stuff. It's not that I don't, I have to, you give the people what they want, Elliot. You know, haven't you watched, you know, Tomorrow Never Dies, James Bond? You know, you forgot the first rule of mass media, Elliot. Give the people what they want. You have to give the people what they want. What I'm going to do instead is go back 
Collector Pizza, Pizza in the chat said he has that in a begging video and people said they want him to get a job. Sure, that would be a great idea. I want him to get a job too. Content. Go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. Uh, you want to check back with me in a couple of months? Let's see how things are going. All right. I'll talk to you then. Go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good job. Yeah, so, I mean, things aren't great. Um, people are still mad at me on YouTube. Uh, my view numbers are pretty much close to zero. I'm having trouble breaking 10K on an upload right now. And, uh, oh, not, not everything is bad. I've got at least one good thing going on. Can I show you? Oh boy. Y'all are quoting Taylor Swift about love. Mike, come on. Just come on. The lady is like the queen of breakup songs. All of her songs are about breaking up with somebody. Love will find you when you least expect it. Taylor Swift. So this is, uh, this is Dazzy. Or you can call her Dez, Desiree. Yeah, call her Dez. Call her the same thing my ex-wife was called. Yeah, you just. I found a girl. <laughs> Look at that. It just. It's just. She she is she is a carpenter's dream. She is a carpenter's dream. No no titties. Flat as a board in need of a screw. I can see myself getting married to Boogie. I could definitely, I could definitely see us getting married. In fact, I. We may or may not have talked about it a little bit, and we may or may not sit around fantasizing about it and thinking about what it's going to look like. And and I called you wifey the other day, and you loved it. You were yeah. so there for it. If I proposed right now on camera, what would you do? I'd say yes. That's a good sign. Why don't you do it then, Boogie? You love her so much. Come on. Boogie has improved my life tremendously. He just makes me happy, the happiest I've ever been. And I'm not alone, and so that he just completes me. Growing up without a father figure has its... <laughs> no, the, the biggest note of the century just came out of her mouth with her growing up without a father figure led to this just <laughs> oh oh god oh she's putting a link to the discord again in there Bro, just <laughs> in line. <laughs> he just makes me happy, the happiest I've ever been. And I'm not alone, and so that he just completes me. Growing up without a father figure has its challenges. Like you just don't have that 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 support system that you would and the advice that you need, and so it's just difficult. I don't ever want to be alone. That's another thing. I'm just I just maybe that's why I have stuffed animals. I just I don't ever want to be alone, and so. Or because the fact that you're only 20, so you're still a child boogie. I'm not chi a boogie. No, Desi, you're still a kid. You're just you're really thinking about getting married to like a just a. Yeah, he groomed her. Like, he seriously did. Like, this, he had to have groomed her in some way or another because if you really look at it, Boogie basically admitted, we're not going to go to the video right now. We we could after if you want, but um, if you go back and watch the video, which is Kid Behind the Camera, the Ask, Me, Ask Us Anything video that I did, in the boogie playlist by the way should be linked below if it's not linked below check the channel i have a entire boogie playlist it's like 50 videos now of this so if you enjoy this watch the playlist it, it, it'll you know you'll have a nice marathon of boogie to deal with along with any other locale you want to watch 
But in one of the videos that I watched, I remember him saying that like he was trying to lead her and be like a father or like a male uh, authority figure in her life. So he basically took advantage of the fact that she has daddy issues and didn't have a male figure to give her that structure that she needed. So it's just nice to have company. <coughs> I help with the dogs. I get him. I get him his water. I, you know, like I do everything in the house because he's a fat, lazy slob. I, I just mainly is to take care of him. He takes care of me. So. Yeah, sometimes I, I pick weeds out here, so, cause like, it makes it look better. I'm trying to trim down these vines, but I'm not doing a good job. I don't do this very much. You know, I used to have a theory, Mike, that if you are a 40 year old man and you have a Snapchat, that means you're a creepy dude. Yeah, it does. Turns out my theory was right. I have a Snapchat and I am a creepy dude. I found that person and they happen to be 20. And I get that it's creepy to date somebody half your age or younger, but people can call me creepy if they want. If she's happy and I'm happy, then I will be the biggest creep you need me to be as long as her and I are happy. You can be as mad as you want. Sexually, we both seem to be having an excellent time. I want to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit because uh, I don't want to get any copyright things. Um, you know, it's never good when you say, well, she's a... I uh, never mind. Screw it. We'll, we'll just have to bear through it because we're going to actually... There's the bathtub scene right during this thing. It's fine. If we get taken off the air, it's fine. We'll just, you know, come back or something. I have a Snapchat and I am a creepy dude. <laughs> I found that person and they happen to be 20. And I get that it's creepy to date somebody half your age or younger, but people can call me creepy if they want. If she's happy and I'm happy, then I will be the biggest creep you need me to be as long as her and I are happy. You can be as mad as you want. Sexually, we both seem to be having an excellent time. I would <laughs> say that it's the best I ever had. What? You are so... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I gotta take a y'all gonna just have to stare at this image for about forty five seconds. you know i think this is a great image let's just sit here and talk about you know some stuff for a bit how's everybody doing today y'all having a lovely day 
you having a good day out there chat you know just uh hanging in there hanging out you know oh lord hey Virick, what's up buddy um yeah so that's all i was gonna say i mean we could just sit here for a few more minutes you know like, like i'm just you know hold on <laughs> Tickets fifty dollars to a comedy show. A little off today. My, uh, I had a friend tell me I looked like a a samurai on vacation. <laughs> I was gonna ask if you could see it, but. <laughs> so in the front here, and I think did you, what are you a YouTuber or something? Yeah, yeah, I've been. Uh... On YouTube for about 17 years. You've been on YouTube for 17 years. Yeah, four million subscribers. Okay, and this is your my, my girlfriend. your girlfriend, who is much younger than you. Is <laughs> comedian's like, uh, Boogie, uh, you're kind of a creep. Suspiciously. <laughs> she's, she's an adult. It's funny. She's that. You know, it's never good when you say, "Well, she's an adult." Is, he, is this a trafficking situation? And I hate it when people single us out. I hate it when people like. We're gonna do that though. It's to be expected. You're right. Yep. He's not manipulating me. I love him for him. He doesn't control. How long until Desi's like Johnny? You were right about him. I want to come on your show and publicly apologize. She's never gonna do that. Hey, Desi, whenever you dump him for finding out that he's a manipulating, you know, second, you can come on the show and talk. I, I don't give it. It'd be good comedy. I mean, I think it'd be good content. It'd be good comedy, too. Tell me, we're a team. He supports me in everything I do and everything I want. He's, he's my support system. That's not good. If you're having Boogie as your freaking support system, oof, that's not good. That's not good at all. Let me get a McCrispy Deluxe combo. Make it large. What do I think about his dire financial situation? I think it's scary. Yeah, what's so scary about it? Um, that he might lose it all in a day. He might just be homeless one day, but. So if I'm broke, if I go broke, okay? If we end up back on disability and it's me, you, and Chad living in some small. We haven't even seen anybody named Chad in this video, unless he's talking about the dog. I mean, didn't he have like some, I, I don't know. Whatever. It's me, you, and Chad living in some small apartment and we're eating McDonald's every day and that's treating ourselves. You could just eat ramen, Boogie. I, I don't eat McDonald's very often. You know, it's a lot cheaper to cook at home. McDonald's is incredibly expensive now. Like, you can get an entire giant bag of fries that would last you two or three meals, maybe between, between you and Desi, like as a side dish, for the cost of one medium fry at McDonald's. Seriously. You can get a bag of fries that are better than McDonald's quality. Five bucks a bag for a huge bag that will last you three, four, five meals as a side order before you just get one little medium box of fries, Boogie. Have you never heard of Stouffer's? Have you never heard of Marie Callender? Have you never heard of cooking at home? Or just a dozen eggs, it's like $3. Okay. You get a you know a thing of bacon, five bucks. You can make a bunch of biscuits, last that for a few days. Seriously, the ingredients that you get to make that one biscuit is the cost of making like 10 at home. Seriously, the the if fast food was cheap, then then 
they wouldn't be around. You know what I mean? A fast food was a was cheaper than eating at home. It wouldn't be a thing. Seriously. It just wouldn't be. You gonna be able to handle that? Yeah, You're I guess it's that? me, you, Chad, eating McDonald's every day in our small cute apartment. Cause I mean, I'm hopeful that people will go back to watching us on YouTube. I hope that people will be I'm hopeful that people will like you know, I can go back to live streaming full time again and do like six hour live streams like every other streamer and like grind it out. But I mean, there is a very real possibility that one day I won't be able to do that anymore. And we're going to have to live off of whatever we can. Are you prepared for that? As long as I have you, that's all I need. I've been thinking about doing that again, doing the live stream grind again, because I actually like live streaming quite a bit. If I can get like 10 people in like, you know, watching, which I don't know how many are watching right now, but like on a stream, that's not this sort of epic in proportion thing. You know, if I could get 10 people, 15, 20 people live, you know, watching, I would stream every night, dude. Like I actually enjoy it. My entire thing of the reason I don't stream as much as I, as this is because generally I could only pull like maybe three to five people in chat, like not even in chat. But like three to five people watching total and it's like i'm talking to one dude the entire time it's sort of like why am i doing this you know but i could be doing something the scales but like seriously like if all right chat if you want me to do more live streams let's just say once a week, twice a week, whatever, not, not ridiculous, not getting rid of the boogie content, but just one, one or two, maybe three streams a week, press one in the chat. If you want me to stick to pre-recorded, no live streams two. So no live streams two, one to two a week, hit one. Have you ever thought about the fact that she's just waiting you out and trying to take your 401k when you die? <laughs> I'm out. I, I, I'm broke. You're broke. I'm broke. Yeah. Four million subscribers. Even if he does go broke and has to sell the house, I'm still going to be by his side. He's the only one that I love and I care about, and there's only one of them. And so I'm not just going to up and leave him for money because money's an issue. Because I love him and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> I mean, my biggest fear is dying on her. If I die in the next two or three years on her, that's just going to ruin her life. I really want you to understand how actually sick I am. Like, I don't know if you actually get it, but this is my health summary. This is everything that's currently wrong with me. And none of it will kill me, but I'm going to gaslight you. Ah, I'm going to gaslight you into thinking it will. My risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so sorry for that. I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll never be ready for it, but I know. Did they cut out the she's a cam girl thing? I think that Mike, are you still here? If you're still here, just just let me know. Hold on. Yeah, he's still here. Mike, did you cut out the cam girl bit because Boogie went about it, the whole cam girl thing? Because he came to me about it, like why didn't complain? Johnny, you lying about her being a cam? Did you cut that out? I mean, I, I'm not going to show on you if you did, but, it, but it, did you? I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be alone. Okay. Because I have a feeling that he, he got all bitchy and went and just blew Mike up and was about that one scene. I've talked to my therapist since me and her have been together about overcoming it. My therapist keeps telling me the same thing. When you learn to love yourself, all these things will fall into place and we just got to teach you those skills. And then I turn to my doctor and I'm like, what do we do? He's like, you've had bypass surgery. You, you lost 200 pounds. What more can I do for you? 
I'm like, fix it, dude, help fix it. And then they're telling me that I'm the one that has to fix it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I'm making less and less every month and I'm scared of this. And now, making his way to the ring, Boogie Tonight! Hey. Why does Boogie not have any sponsors or affiliate links or... Let's just, let's pause for a second. Let's just go to any random boogie video. Let's just go to this one. Just for a second. All right. I'm going to look in his description and see what he got. Come on, open up. He has one link for shop for a new PC to meta PCs who suck. And then he has merch. Look in my description, for God's sake, of any video that I put out. The the stream alone has less than that. You have a description. Let's see. I'll just go to my channel. Let's just do this. Uh, where the hell is it? Why can't I just go straight to my channel? Come on, YouTube. What is with this stupid new layout? Johnny Fox Boogie. Let's just do that. You just click on any of my, like this. If you go down to my description, I got links to different playlists. I got a whole thing about following me. I have different, all these different ways to support the channel. I got affiliate links to all my gear that I use so you can replicate my sound if you wanted. I got Patreon supporters down here. I got notices. I got hashtags. I got an entire encyclopedia of, you know, to, to follow me, to support the channel, to, help people start their own channel, all of that. And to make money off of at least the stuff from here down from support down to the gear I use. Boogie has one measly link to a PC website, expecting people to buy a $1,200 computer. That's worth maybe 600 bucks. So Mike, I just got off the phone with Keemstar and he has a boxing event coming up and he's giving me a slot. Like you're telling me that you couldn't pull a f Look, okay, most of the people that do these sponsorships are actually not sponsored, they're actually affiliates. So what they all they gotta do is go say, hey, not even say, hey, a lot of like Amazon, you don't need to do anything but sign up for it. NordVPN, you don't even have to talk, yeah, you don't even have to talk to them. You don't have to talk to half of these companies, Express, Nord, Amazon, Sweetwater, none of them. You fill out a form, they push it through, giving you like a, a link or whatever, uh, like an affiliate link or whatever. And then you just put this in your description and say you're sponsored. They're not actually, most of these companies probably don't even know who the hell they, these people are. When they say, oh, I've got, I'm, you know, like, well, delete me. You know, once again, I have a link for delete me below. If you want to, you know, make sure you don't get doxxed 20% off. I didn't talk to the people who delete me. I just bought a subscription to delete me to avoid being doxxed. And then it says in there, it's like, uh, if someone buys your, you know, delete me with your link, you get 50 bucks. Like they no calls, no nothing. So Boogie's just lazy. He's so lazy that he doesn't even look for affiliate programs to try to sell beyond these overpriced PCs that ain't worth a from meta. It's his fault that he's broke because he's not even trying to make money. He, he just, he just bitches. This fight pays $10,000. Oh. No chance against me. Shut the fuck up. The people are going to see me win this thing. This is where I turn it all around. Right here. Sheamus Dunn stops the contest and therefore your winner wings oh! watch the way he hits my head my mm. brain got shocked with each one of those it's ricocheting against my skull by the way I forgot oh my god how did I forget I know that y'all if you love me and I love you there is another boogie movie out there that you may not know about really quick before we get to the last 10 minutes of this one. 
There is a Boogie movie that you may have not seen. It is called The Dark Side of Boogie 2988. And guess who made it? Me. I made it. And it actually goes into the actual controversies and drama and the actual bad stuff the Boogie doesn't want you to know. So if you want to watch a, the real Boogie movie, not saying Mike Clums is bad, but if you want to see one that's like the unauthorized biography of Boogie 2988, you can watch mine for free right now on youtube it's on my channel it's called the dark side of boogie 2988 the movie it's four hours long so yeah so, exactly and mr jedi is in the movie oh well, since you guys were here last i did have a bit of a windfall which bought me some time here in this house uh the problem with that is i spent more than 10,000 getting that fight together. So by the time all that was done, all I did was put that $10,000 back into savings. Sounds good, Egg Reviews uh, music. Being in a new relationship is great, but I mean, she can't help pay a $2,200 mortgage. Okay, let's go through my monthly bills for a second. All right, let's get through My it. health insurance is 800 I have $500 for the medical. Boogie, if you ain't got no money coming in, why are you on health insurance? Why ain't you on Medicaid? Okay, so that's one that makes no sense. Medical bills. I have $500 worth of utility. Once again, medical bills. Why the hell do you have all these medical bills if you have insurance that you're paying $800 for? $500 is, uh, is not... <laughs> whatever keep going I, I pay for doctor's visits at physical therapy who the pay 750 dollars a month to see a doctor or physical therapist no way and even if you didn't have insurance would you be paying that no way a doctor's visit tops is 200 dollars maybe 500 if you had to see like a therapist but a lot of those hospitals would actually work with you on that and probably just, you know, settle for a lot less. But it is not seven fifty and nine fifty a month for those. There, there's no way. Five hundred utilities does make sense to Darcy because he has a big house and he has all his machines on and he probably has all the lights on and just yeah, five hundred dollars a month does sound about right for utilities. Because that includes water and sewer and all that. These labs constantly. I still have to pay for the lamps for what boogie? You don't have cancer. You're not going through chemo. You're not going through anything that would require a bunch of labs. You have health insurance. This is all of this is boogie. This is this is where you're spending money on toys or something. Because when you have health insurance, you don't pay any of these things. Car that I drive. I still have to pay for car insurance. I still have to pay for health insurance. Diablo four came out. I had to buy it. You had to buy a $70 game. Uh, Final fantasy 16 came out. I had to buy it. $90 for a game. Dude, I bought fallout four at 40 bucks, like two weeks after it came out. And I'm still pissed off about that $40. Like, like 90, what are you doing? You're not streaming this bogey. You're not a full-time streamer that has to stay up with the latest titles. You've just, who the, that's not a requirement. Dave Ramsey is probably screaming at the top of his lungs. If he ever heard this. Tears of the kingdom came out. I had, oh, I had to buy another $70 game. And then my mortgage is $2,000 and my groceries are 800 bucks. It just I had to buy it. That's four hundred dollars for the video. Two hundred and fifty dollars for internet and date seven fifty. Boogie, goddamn Okay, I'm about to have I'm about to have an explosion like Dave Ramsey at this point. All of this, the reason that you spend so much, Boogie, is it's on everything right here from the from the pretty much half down is hundred dollar payment fine, utilities fine, car insurance fine. All of this is supposed to be paid for by medical. I'm sure he has some excuse, just like my stepsister who's a mooch just like him. If I had some thing where he has a third light bill of that month coming up somehow. Just uh half of your bills are boogie. How the f are you spending seven hundred and fifty dollars a month on dates unless that's it. It's a hawk.
unless that's her monthly salary that she gets on top of all the other like not having to pay rent serious dates seven hundred and fifty dollars I, I just seven hundred and fifty dollars He must have the shittiest insurance ever, Regal. If that's what he, if he's paying eight hundred dollars a month and he has health health bills like that, for what non lethal conditions he has, he must have the shittiest health insurance ever. Just the shittiest one that he could have ever picked. Just, I'm just. This is. And $300 in gas. That's another one that's ridiculous. All these bills are just completely unnecessary. He's living far above his means because he has gotten it in his head that he can't eat ramen because that's prison food. Just games right there. But if you take out all of it, you take it out. All I eat is sandwiches every day. All I do is sit here. I don't pay for any Netflix subscriptions. All I pay for is internet, utilities, medical bills, mortgage. If I pay for just that, I need $7,000 a month. Boogie, that's bad. Verifiable, 100% crystal clear bet. No way in a month. I'm not making $7,000 a month, and I have no clue how to do it. So there's something I've always wanted to try. There's a lot of research that came out of Europe, and now we're doing it here in the United States where psychedelics can help reset certain brains oh my god joe rogan has entered the chat have you ever used dmt boogie people who experience childhood abuse people who've gone through trauma people who deal with post-traumatic stress disorder and i'm all of those I, to be honest i'm scared shitless it's one of the only things i haven't tried yet so let's give it a shot A local shaman. So, the, so some crackhead out in the woods is going to give Boogie some peyote and that's going to make his mind better. But he hasn't changed one ounce since this happened. Imagine my, my shock. Is Ryan Arthur DeLeo, and I've adopted the name Flaming Star. There's one thing that's... Un yeah, he just looks like a trustworthy guy. You go out in the middle of the woods with this guy that looks like fit from... Finn or whatever his name was from the Phantom Cab on Are You Afraid of the Dark? You know, he's going to just drive you 100 miles an hour in his ghost taxi and run into a tree, and that's how you get fixed. He kills you. Undeniable is that there's always this question about why. Why am I here? Existence. What's really happening? Who am I? That's what happens when you seek out hallucinogenics. It's gonna allow everything else physically here to relax. The emotional stuff is gonna come out. Trauma's gonna come out, but after- Here, smoke this rat turd and it'll save your life. That's what he's about to do. Words, your atoms are gonna go back into their original positions. That's why. He'll be mind, body, and spirit all one together. We're all connected. I believe when it. you get to a certain point of understanding inside your intellect mind, that connectivity you realize Kalima Kalima <laughs> they rips Boogie's heart out your hands are basically look like, like USB ports so these are the uh, this is the part where you drink the the you know water with the roofies and he blows you in your sleep and you wake up with a sore butthole it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power and I'm actually holding it in my hand right now
Through the power of the internet, he is holding shrooms. But here we go. It's taste. They don't taste bad. Honestly, that doesn't taste too bad. They're pretty good and dry. Every, everybody just says kind of earthy. Why do we got to do this out in the woods and not at the dude's house? <laughs> I mean, really? Stim and all. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He literally just gave him something that came off of cow. He's literally eating mushrooms that grew out of cow. That's what shrooms are, by the way, if you didn't know. That it's literally mushrooms that come off of cow poop. Welcome to the club. So he literally ate cow turd. May God bless you and be with you on your journey. God didn't say nothing about eating shrooms or having shamans and just, you know, Indian rituals and out in the middle of the woods. Okay, so I think we've been about 20 minutes in. About 15, yeah. About 15. So we're about 15 minutes in and I started to feel things are kind of wavy and kind of disconnected. It's kind of like my brain works on multiple channels and like I have to pick and choose what I'm concentrating on. I've been balls. I have no clue where the, or even who I am. And I don't give a fuck. Oh, he's about to experience the second part of the realization of letting go. And we're gonna to get to the other side of it. I told you they'd come. It's gonna get nice and bright in about five more minutes. Yeah. And the reflection in the water is really cool too. So what do you think was the first trauma that you experienced which, you had, which basically set up like a defense mechanism? Y'all need to stop putting his hooves on the screen. We don't need to see pictures of that. Man. Yeah, my parents are just crazy. They're broken people. Parents? Yeah. You had parents? I was raised by wolves. Stewards? People who are like trying to, to, to... Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? What? Like, they don't, I mean, that doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It was the dumbest shit. Oh, and it happened so long ago. <laughs> like, I've just been waiting. By the way, just putting this in the chat really quick. You won't see it for another few seconds. My boogie movie here. Now you have a link to my movie that I made on Boogie that actually goes into the scandals and, sh and it's free on YouTube. It's four hours long, so enjoy. For the right time to just drop that. So, uh, when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? Oh, that's exactly what it is, right? Like, are you ready to let all oh, that go? I actually hit a key. Yeah, please, man. Oh my God, this is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, 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 what? Happiness. <laughs> I, this is the first time I felt it. So I was about to tell him, man. It's all kind of broken. What? What? Just all the things I've been worried about. <laughs> because because you are the man. master of your own orchestra. It's a game, right? Just let them so go, it's up man. to you to choose. What well, does my is that my phone? No, it's his. Steven, are you can you get up? Hello? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> 
I did the same thing when I saw Foodie Beauty. It was on my Patreon. There's a video of I wish that she wasn't such a she was a false flagger. But it was one of my best jokes ever was like it was like this this uh image of, of Chantal waking up and she had like one of the uh, CPAP masks on, like he's wearing, and like she's just like her eyes all big. And it's like, Luke, I'm your father, like immediately into the video. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's what all I can think about when I see CPAP machines is Luke, I'm your father. Darth Boogie, yeah. I'm still not sure I'm like really here yet. I don't really want breakfast. That's just that's change. Jesus. Whew. Come on, guys. Let's go. It's just all, none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct. It's all a simulation. It's all a... It's He's still high. Fucking video game. You know when you die? I think I died last night. I physically, my body was fine, but I think I went back into the void we come from and I think uh, I think I'm still in it except I'm also in this physical corporal body but I'm also the incorporeal being that puppets it and controls it and God I feel like I'm in control I feel like I'm in control of myself for the first time uh, yeah! <laughs> Buggy is still broke. All right, so real quick. Uh, okay. Right here. So I have my own Boogie movie. Um, we're not going to watch it together tonight because, I mean, why would I watch my own video live? Because that's kind of dumb. But it's four hours long. It's called The Dark Side of Boogie 2988. Uh, this is the real documentary. If you, like, all right, just, I, I'll give a quick review really quick of Mike Clums. Mike, you did a great job on cinematography. You did really good on the editing. Everything on the technical side it was great. The story, obviously, dog, it was a bunch of gaslighting from Boogie. I do not blame you for that. I do not hold it against you at all. You did it for, you know, art reasons. I appreciate that. And I understand that. So good job to you, sir. And I hope that you make many more wonderful films in the future. Hopefully you can get on with wings or DSP and make a better movie. Um, not saying it was a bad movie, but it's just Boogie wasn't going to give you anything juicy. You know, he's just going to give you just nonsense. So if you want to watch the real one, let's just watch a little bit of this one. When you fall down the rabbit hole known as boogie 2988 i was just going to make one video that was only going to be about 20 minutes long and it just got out of hand what you're about to watch is the result of pure chaos and trying to keep such chaos organized into something that is digestible understandable and entertaining nonetheless i thank the people who helped me with this and i thank you for watching so let's start the video and you can see how this spiraled out of control welcome to boogie versus the world welcome back everyone to another video My so the thing about my movie is it's not structured the same way his was. It was basically like one long Johnny Fox video. But what happened was is around, around this point where I started fact checking Boogie, I started going a little bit out of control and we went into the Lucy Fox situation. We went into Keemstar. We went into some DMS that he sent another creator trying to get guilt trip them we go into basically every boogie scandal, including link by link, looking at every single thing 
from that master list he keeps about on Sam and Talkie. I went through all of it. See, like right here at about two hours in, I, I literally went through all of it. So if you want the ultimate boogie video, four hours, three minutes, 31 seconds, it's on my channel called The Dark Side of Boogie 2988. It's long. It, I had timestamps for it already. Do I still have timestamps? Actually, I do, don't I? In my Discord. I'll put those in the pinned comment. Um, I think I do. Let's, uh, is it in the welcome or is it, where, where is it at? Maybe it's in the, where the was it? It was, I'll find it. I'll, I'll find it. Maybe it's useful stuff. I'm trying to remember where I put it because I, I know I put the timestamp somewhere to that movie. Is this it? No, that, uh, there it is. Here's the boogie, uh, dark side of boogie timestamps i'll put those on the video really quick so y'all can watch it without have watch it in chunks or just skip to whatever parts you want so we'll just do this uh just real quick timestamps so if you're watching the the documentary that i did go ahead and just refresh and you'll see the timestamps at the top all right um yeah discord uh johnny fox uh discord.johnnyfox.net join me on twitter join me in all of, you know my social media if you want to hang out or whatever i hang out in discord most days so if you want to hang out with me or hear about when i'm going to go live discord of course here's a link to all my where if you want to follow me on anything um yeah i don't really have much else for you i'm gonna let i'm just gonna let you go so if you enjoyed it like comment and subscribe share with a friend it's already demonetized by the way so i'm gonna have to have that uphill battle uh trying to get a censored version of this out eventually but we'll leave the uncut version up as well because uh yeah some people just like the more natural version but a censored version that will actually be able to get some you know ads on it will be available in a week or something thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did hit that like and subscribe button with the bell icon join me on discord by going to discord.johnnyfox.net also check out my patreon here where you can get access to a ton of exclusive content where i talk about how i make my videos airsoft fatty cyrax booty beauty an exclusive podcast my books stuff you will never see on youtube again last but not least go to my description right now and click on a link to a playlist of your choice if you want to binge watch my videos thanks for watching take care